What's going on everybody? So I have been working on an order for these little tokens. Um, I make them for a local company that uses them as a free ice cream scoop voucher or a coupon or whatever you want to call it. Um, as I've been running this job, I'm getting towards the end and I figured it was a good opportunity to compare a couple of the desktop machines that I have. Most of the time I run this on my big laser because I can run the whole thing, let it go, and it I can finish almost the whole thing. But I'm down to like my last 80. So we're gonna give the two desktop models that I have a run to see how they compare. So we're gonna be looking at the Xtool P2 and the One Laser XRF. Hang on tight and we'll get into it. All right, to start off, just to let you guys know up front, I have both of these machines and they were both provided to me at no cost. So I don't really have an obligation on one side or the other. Um, and this is just my thoughts as I look at them um, to give you an idea of what maybe you are looking for and what you should pick. Um, I'm not gonna tell you which one to go with, but I will just give you what my thoughts are. First off, let's talk about some general specs. So you've got the Xtool P2 and the One Laser XRF, or we'll just call it the X series, because if we're gonna compare apples to apples, we can talk about the 55 watt glass on both of them. So you're looking pretty much the same price when they're at full price. Um, right now, the One Laser is much less expensive. It is an early bird pricing through the rest of the year. So that is about three grand rather than, you know, the 36, 37, $3,900. So looking at those things, pricing is about the same, but there are gonna be some differences between the different machines. If you're looking at also the base, each machine, they're very similar in the fact that they have a base. So that way you can do deeper projects, utilize the rotary, go through all that kind of stuff. Um, so <clears throat> machines, as far as, the, the depth, those kinds of things are generally the same. The X tool does say that it has a 36 by 14 inch bed, which it does, but you can't actually use all of it. So the usable space is actually a 24 by 12, which is the exact same size as the actual usable space on the One Laser X series. So bed sizes are exactly the same. All right, next thing, let's talk about speed. So the advertised speed for the different machines. Xtool P2, we're talking about 600 millimeters a second. That's the max speed. Even when you go into their software, you literally cannot go past 600 millimeters a second. That is as far as it will let you go. Uh, Xtool doesn't really give you the ability to go in and edit settings or change things. Um, it's all kind of hidden away in the back end. Even if you go into Lightburn, there's not a way to get into it. Um, you can use the console, but I'm not super familiar with that side of the G-code and how much you can mod that. Uh, on the other side, so we'll talk about the X-Series from One Laser. We're talking about 1,200 millimeters a second at the top end for your X-Series across the board. So glass and your RF tube, which is the XRF. But keep in mind that sometimes glass will have a hard time keeping up with those upper speeds that are getting like 600, 800 plus. Uh, just the pure activation of the tube, the glass sometimes has a struggle of keeping up. That's where that XRF or the RF tube comes into play. Still CO2, but activates much faster and can keep up with those high-end speeds and get the good detail that you're looking for. So specs so far, um, that's kind of what we're looking at. If you want to go fast, you're looking at one laser. So another thing to keep in mind is that one has a controller, so you can physically mess with it. Um, the other doesn't. So the one laser has a small touch screen controller that lets you use the, air, the directional keys. You can actually go in there, move the head around, press the autofocus, do all that, um, and then even send a job to the laser and store it for later use. The Xtool P2 does not. Um, it is a G code system. And so usually it is streaming from the computer. You need to have a direct connection or it holds it in memory and then runs it and then it's done. Um, usually you can potentially replay that once, but it doesn't hold a full list of jobs. So that way you can 
use them over and over and over again, move to a different job, and then go back. Like that's not in there. But you can do that in the DSP or the Ruida controllers that come on the One Laser X series. So that is a benefit, um, especially for someone like me that's doing more of the business side of things and I wanna keep jobs available at my fingertips that I run often. Uh, you literally just scroll through, pick the job you want and hit play and go. So differences in that. One thing that I will give Xtool is that they have their own proprietary software. And so for somebody that's coming in as a new user and kind of at that hobby level and wants to do some cool things, there's a lot of stuff that you can do. So they're able to process curved surfaces, their cameras are really good, um, they have multiples, so that way you can get really precision with the camera. Um, me on my side, where I'm doing more bulk work and more of the same thing over and over again, jigs are my go-to. And so that stuff is, is not super important to me, um, and I will usually just create a jig and run the same thing over and over and over again. Um, Xtool even has the options to do some batch processing and be able to do like actually capture all of the things that are sitting on a bed and place all the imaging and all that kind of stuff. Still, I, my jigs, if I put together a quick jig, I can knock things out left and right. So sometimes that processing time with the Xtool software can take a while. Um, sometimes if the, the product is not the exact same shade or shape or whatever, sometimes it fails. But it is a really cool feature for somebody that's you know starting out and, and wanting to know how to use lasers and, and get into it um, and do fancy things. It's great. Um, if you really want to get a business machine, I feel like those things are less important. If you're really getting into your more intermediate advanced phase as well, um, you're not going to care about any of that stuff. So another thing that um, absolutely drives me nuts about the X tool machine is that it doesn't come with a honeycomb bed. It's something extra. Um, it comes with a knife bed and then you can take the knives out and you can lay things that are flat for engraving down on the tray below. Um, but I love the honeycomb beds. I love to use magnets to hold things in place. And I mean, I use that same thing on my big machines and my small machines, like across the board, I love to use magnets. X tool, it's an extra thing you can buy, um, but it doesn't come with it. And I've used their knives, and if you have a material that's warped at all, like you have to get clamps and all that kinds of stuff, the magnets are just so quick and easy. I, I really enjoy using honeycomb bed. I might get people that comment in the comments that say, oh, well, you should use a knife bed for any time you're cutting things, and like that's what it's for, and blah, 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 blah. I know, and I do sometimes, but the honeycomb bed, it's just really nice to be able to throw magnets down, get them a piece of material nice and flat. So that's what I do. X tool doesn't have that. The uh, One Laser P2 comes standard with a honeycomb bed. It doesn't even have knives. Uh, is that good or bad? Maybe. Uh, I mean, it, if you are doing a ton of cutting, then yeah, the knives would probably be nice. But if that's the case, I think you probably need a bigger machine if you're doing a lot of cutting because that's what I do on my big machines is I'll use the knives when I'm doing bigger cut projects and things like that so you get better air airflow and you're getting less um, burn back or flashback on the back of your materials. So, is what it is. But Xtool, no honeycomb, one laser, X-Series does have it. One thing that I would give to both machines is that they are pretty well compartmented off from the electronics. So the inside of your machine is separate from where your electronics sit. So you're not getting all the dust and debris and nasty all in there. Um, one laser does it a little bit better because there's not even one single hole to the back part and electronics part of the, the laser. Um, they even, like the beam path, has a, a semi-transparent mirror that it, it passes through. And the X-Tool has a tiny little hole where that goes through. So not a big deal, um, but you're definitely going to get a little bit of smoke and stuff back in that back cabinet and you might want to open it up, clean it every once in a while. But both, they're, they're trying to keep gunk away from your electronics, which is good. So one thing that I have noticed uh, between the two different machines, they, they both have a pretty sturdy build, um, but 
I can definitely tell and in the One Laser X series, there is a very thick aluminum plate that is at the bottom of the machine. And really when you see stuff like that, it is for stability, it is for rigidity. And I can imagine because of the speed that the X series can go from One Laser, it, it, that's what it's for. Uh, the more rigid they can make that machine, the more it can stand up to those speeds over and over and over again. Uh, but like I said, the X tool seems pretty sturdy as well. It just does, I can, I can see the difference between that bottom plate um, being much thicker in the One Laser, where the X tool P2 is, is a little bit thinner, um, has a little bit of bracing around it, but that plate is pretty dang hefty. Um, I have, I did notice as well that the One Laser machine is heavier which also usually means that it's because they're using harder materials, thicker materials, things like that for the actual cabinet casing. So things to keep in account. All right, so let's get into the project. Let's talk about it. So this is usually done on my big 150 watt machine. So you can see, you can look at the engraving uh, if it will focus. And sometimes it gets a little burnt out. It doesn't get all the detail that I want, but this ends up being an acceptable quality because I have such a large batch to do and I do it on the big machine, it knocks it all out at once. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna go through with the One Laser X series and then also with the P2 and do some testing, try and get some results that are similar to this using the top speeds of both. Then show you what the results look like and what the times for each project was. So that way you have an idea of what the machines are doing and what kind of processing time you can expect. All right, here we are after a fair amount of testing on both. So to give you the methodology of how I, I got to these results is I went to max speed, period. So max speed, 600 millimeters a second for the X-Tool P2 and 1200 millimeters a second for the One Laser XRF. So max speed, messed with power and the line interval, stuff like that after that to get the best thing that I could. And so let's get in a little bit closer. So this is an okay engraving. Um, it's probably hard to see in here, but it's a little bit blurry. Like the edges are not super clean. Um, like they, they almost look like frayed. I mean, blurry is probably the best way to say it. Um, but then you come over here and you look at this and really sharp edges. I will say that it looks like this got more barn. This, you can see it, but if you want to talk about true to the vector, um, it's probably this one because you can even see the little cross that's right there in this window. Here, it's like blown out. Um, so the, the real vector, honestly, it's not a great vector to use because these lines right here on the edge are super thin. And so I feel like this caught the most detail. Um, it's true to the font size um, for the One Laser XRF. But, so looking at this, you've got the time to completion for one, just one of these is three minutes and 48 seconds at 600 millimeters a second, 45% power. This is a glass tube, 45% power is a pretty good power range for this. I went higher, I went like 50 and it was like a really charry, burny mess. So we backed it down over here. So one minute and 24 seconds at 1,200 millimeters a second, 70% power. Um, this is a 38 watt RF tube. So lower wattage, I'm able to, because it's a metal tube, an RF tube, you can get up to like 95% and that's like where full power really is for this, this machine. And so again, nice and crisp, not really too, oh, not really like burnt on the edges. The edges are clean, 
um, creamery. You look at that creamery word and it is clean, super crisp. And here you can see that it's there, but it's a little blurry. Almost looks like you got your eyes crossed a little bit. But so respectable, I'm gonna say respectable engravings on both sides, but looking at this here and this here, I mean, even if I went and I slowed this down a little bit, say, you know, I dropped it to a thousand millimeters a second or even 800 millimeters a second, I'd get tons of detail out of that and probably still be well ahead of this time over here. But this was a test of max speed. So this is what we got at max speed. I'm gonna tell you right now, max speed is not always the best thing to do when you're trying to get detailed engravings. It just isn't. Um, but this is pretty impressive. Um, again, max speed here, you saw it in the previous clip. Um, there's a lot of swing. So really with these machines, one of the biggest differences is acceleration. Um, I'll show it in this clip here that what the acceleration is for this guy. You know, we're talking about 30,000 millimeters a second squared. Like that is tons of acceleration. And this one, um, I found it is 6,400 millimeters a second square. So 6,400, 30,000. So when we're talking about acceleration, it is the ability to slow down as it goes past and then speed back up to go down and back up. So stopping at both ends, that's what our acceleration is for. So the higher the acceleration, the less time you need to stop. Lower acceleration, more time it takes. And the more you'll see that go over the project and swing past it. Acceleration makes a big difference in this. Even if I ran 600 here, 600 here, it would look a lot different in a video side by side. So these are the results. You take it for what it's worth. And I'd love to hear in the comments what you guys think of this comparison. Did I do it right? Did I do it wrong? Should I have done something different? Um, so feel free to, to share your thoughts down below. All right, so there you have it. Kind of, you know, the comparison of the specs, um, a sim uh, the same project done on both machines and results side by side. Just to give you the best idea you can have about what these machines are capable of and how they compare to each other. So again, not trying to tell you which way to go because for some people, you know, one might be better than the other. Um, and depending on the sales, one might be better than the other sometime a year, but there you go. I do hope that this video was helpful for you. And if you have any additional thoughts, please drop them down in the comments. Um, I'll leave in the description, any of these details talking about my comparisons, speed, powers, all that kind of stuff down in the details. And I'll also leave you links for both machines. So that way you can go and look at the specs for yourself and, and take a look see what you need to do to be an educated consumer as you get into your machine. So again, like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.